everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, this presentation is going to be about uh, multi-platform and actually multi-site mobile development. My name is Emmanuel, or well, Emanuele. I come from Italy. Uh, I've actually been living in Denmark in the last nine years, so that makes me kind of Danish as well. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, and uh, as of me, I've been working for Nokia for five years, some years ago, when Nokia was still kind of relevant. And uh, yeah, I was part of the team that actually deployed Jenkins globally. Uh, before that, every single team in Nokia was basically running their own Perl scripts during the night, and uh, that was just hell. It was impossible to centralize our, all that. So we decided to go with, uh, well, Hudson at the time, and then immediately switched to Jenkins. Uh, and now I work for Realm. Uh, just a raise of hand, how many of you know what Realm is or ever heard of Realm? Hey, somebody. Uh, Realm is a new company, uh, and it's basically a database for mobile devices. Uh, right now it's available for Coco and Android, but of course we're working for adding more platforms. And uh, it's focused on ease of use, speed, and space efficiency. Uh, and one of the reasons we decided to actually do all that is, well, this. Uh, as you can see, there has been a lot of movement in the database world in the server side, but almost nothing was happening in the mobile side. SQLite has been king, and it's pre-installed on iOS and Android and so on, and SQLite is great, it's really great, and we love it. Uh, but we thought we could do better, uh, so that's our bet. Uh, uh, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, without them, we couldn't be here. Uh, it's quite a few this year, actually, more than last year, so great job. Part zero is actually about mobile. Uh, we are a mobile company, uh, but we are a bit of a special mobile company in the sense that we de develop a realm, uh, a mobile library. Uh, that means that we don't have to deal too much about UI and you know, dealing with different screen resolutions and app and play stores, which is, I mean, what really bugs most mobile developers. But yeah, really, we actually have to do that anyway. <laughs> we, provide, we provide example apps uh, and uh, yeah, lots of tests and so on. So we actually have to deal with all that stuff. Uh, and we have plans, of course, to actually provide some demo apps in the Play Store, and yeah. So we actually have to do all that as well. It's a bit of a pain, but it has to be done. Uh, let's talk about layers. Our technology is based on layers. Uh, we are based on a common C++ core. Uh, that means that we have to deal with Make, GCC, Clang, you name it. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's the Objective-C binding uh, for Coco, which is fair enough, it's nice. And do uh, you think there's another layer? There is Swift, uh, this brand new programming language is based on the Objective-C runtime, so it's actually a layer on top of that. And it all works actually pretty good. Android. Android, well, we share the same common C++ core. On top of that, there's JNI. So we have to deal with the native code from Java. So we need to deal with that. Then we have a dynamic Java interface, which is uh, basically a very thin layer on top of JNI. And what it does is just exposes whatever is on the, on the core. So it's kind of a tabular data, so you can actually do crazy stuff. You can add columns at runtime, you can do all renames and so on, which is extremely powerful, but also extremely hard to use. 
that's why we actually <laughs> wrap all that uh, with actually an object store. So it's pretty transparent to the user. You just put your objects inside uh, this object store, and, uh, and then you query it out whenever you need it. Uh, so as you can see, we have to deal with quite a few technologies. And uh, yeah, luckily Jenkins is amazing for this. Uh, many people who actually never use Jenkins, they think that it's very Java-centric. But it, it really is not anymore. So we're able to do all kinds of stuff with Make, GCC, Clang, Xcode build, including, I don't know, XC pretty to make the output more <laughs> readable. Uh, Gradle for Android builds, uh, we, do with, we deal with Amazon Web Services, S3. We do checks for Gal Valgrind, of course, on our core and, and everything else to, to check for memory leaks and so on. And we, use an ex we do an extensive use of pipelines because we have many, many jobs. And uh, of course, Jenkins does so, so much more for that. So the past. The past is a relative term. We are a new company, so, uh, but still, there's a past. Uh, the past was one single co-located team in Copenhagen uh, working on more or less a dozen projects. Uh, when I got hired a year ago, uh, well, there was almost no CI, and they, my introduction to, to Realm was like, yeah, well, we have a build system that works, so <laughs> that's something. Uh, so the first thing I did, of course, I set up a Jenkins master on the internet, and then set up a few slaves internally, some Mac slaves, some uh, Linux slaves, some Windows slaves, you name it. Uh, and uh, tip number one, if you're dealing with uh, your own Jenkins instance on the internet, please invest on an SSL certificate. It's really worth it. Uh, it's not about mm, what other people can, can see or not see, but eventually you will have your code streaming through there. So it's, it's important. And uh, I mean, right now, most of our projects are actually open source, but we still have some closed source stuff. And until it's open source, we'd like to keep it that way. Uh, one very important thing, and this is not just for mobile, but for everything, uh, have a fast feedback on pull requests. Uh, that means that you don't want to allow developers to actually do that mental switch uh, to, some, to some other task, because then it will go like, oh yeah, I'll fix it later, and then a week goes by, and that's not good. Uh, you want to to fix the error as soon as it, as it happens. And the other thing is that you don't want to waste the viewer's time, so you don't want them to actually start reading code that you're not even sure that even builds or passes unit tests. And so, so let's not waste time. And uh, that means that you have to test master really hard. Uh, Anything that can be automated should be automated, and do that with Jenkins, of course. So do builds, do tests, do test coverage, do tracks, track everything you can. Uh, as the guy before me was, was mentioning, just log everything, because you never know what you're going to need. Uh, we even track to-dos and fix me, so we see if, <laughs> if it's getting too many, or uh, we track the size of the artifact, because, of course, being a library, the size is important, and of course it's the same for apps as well. Uh, so track whatever you can. Uh, but that means, I mean, if you have a fast feedback on pull request, that means that sometimes master might break because not all tests are running on pull request, and that that is not even as, uh, that doesn't even assure us that things will not break on master because maybe the pull request is, will take a while to get merged, so it has been merged, it has been tested on an old version of master, so you never know what's gonna happen on the new version of master. So sometimes bad things happen, and that means that you have to raise awareness when, when master breaks, you have to act and act fast. What we do is extreme feedback. Uh, this is a lamp that I actually developed uh, with some 
former colleagues. Uh, and uh, it helps quite a lot. Uh, it implements the principle of uh, gamification for developers. Uh, and that means that when anything goes wrong, that light goes red. An alarm will play. And uh, on my recent build, I even installed eSpeak, so it will blame the person who broke the build. <laughs> but don't do that, it's a bit cruel. Uh, I developed the Jenkins plugin to handle that. Uh, so it's pretty easy to set up, especially if you're Jenkins master and the LAMP are in the same network. If you are in huge corporate environments, you probably don't want to, to, to scan the whole subnet, so I actually <laughs> made an option to just add the IP of the LAMP, which is shown in the display. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very useful, and especially imagine if you have two teams sitting in the same room and every team has its own LAMP. That will start some kind of nagging and so on when, uh, when, the ramp, <laughs> when one LAMP goes red. So it, it really helps to get it get fixed quickly. A question, uh, what do you like best? One big, big job or several small ones? Let's raise some hands. Who prefers a one big job? Nobody. Who prefers, oh, you. Who prefers many small ones? Thank God. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Uh, we have many, many small jobs, and they're all orchestrated with the BuildFlow plugin. Uh, it's a nice plugin. It's not perfect, but it's functional, and it does the job very well for us. And uh, this is one of our pipelines. As you can see, there's a bunch of job. There's a red ball. I broke it on purpose. That's not true. Uh, but as you can see, there are several tests going on. So you, we build a browser. We build release packages. We always build release packages because we want to be able to release something back in time uh, and be able to trust that build that has been tested. Uh, we test for iOS, we test for OSX, and so on. So this is one of our pipelines. Uh, and it looks pretty easy in the BuildFlow plugin. It's a DSL, it's based on Groovy. Who uses the BuildFlow plugin? Good. So nothing fancy here. Uh, I just ignore the failure of uh, OSX coverage because, yeah. Uh, that's not relevant for the quality of the build, but it's something that it's nice to know. Tip number two, fingerprint your artifacts. That's something that, that many people don't do, but it's extremely important, especially if you give out a version of the library to some beta testers and so on, and then you want to be able to track down what build was that. It's very, very important, uh, and it helps a lot. when it, You don't realize you need it until you really need it. And we come to the present day. Now we have yeah, several teams, and we are spread between Copenhagen and San Francisco. Still, I'm the only CI guy, and I'm sitting in Copenhagen. <laughs> So stuff like this happens. So can you please install Xcode 6, beta 6 on the slave machine? And uh, I live nine hours away, so 12 hours later, yes, done. I only had to download six gigabytes for a coding environment. <laughs> and 12 hours later, again, it's like, yeah, thanks, but yeah, in the meantime, beta 6 came out. Can you please update that too? So <laughs> one way to go around this is actually to keep your Jenkins master as open as possible. So let people add their own slaves, let people change their jobs, do whatever they like. They're the developers. They're smart people. And uh, anyway, yeah, the the... the the configuration build uh, history, so you can always blame them if they break something. Uh, so take inspiration from what Jenkins does. Uh, it's, it's very easy to contribute to Jenkins, and it should be very easy to contribute to whatever you guys do. Uh, 
And then what happens? It's release day. Uh, that's always a bit scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, so we do whatever we can to try to automate releases as well, as I'm sure you do the same. And I just want to show you how we do it. Um, this is one of our pipelines. It's uh, very short. It's nothing fancy. We deploy with uh, we we update the website with the new documentation. Nothing, nothing too fancy. But the code is uh, kind of more convoluted, uh, so I broke it down a bit. So imports, <laughs> remember your imports, otherwise everything will break down. And uh, actually, the build follow plugin sometimes will report errors when they're not there. So don't trust those red markings below your text. Just test it. And then you have to remember to be defensive, especially in this job, uh, which means that you have to check. I mean, set everything to null just to be sure that it's being retrieved correctly and so on. Get the version, get the old version, do what kind of magic you need to do. Uh, and then retrieve your data. So traverse uh, the Jenkins tree uh, and, and get the name of the jobs and the, what build number was related to that pipeline of core and so on. Uh, then you can get the graph, actually, and then operate on that graph. As, as you can see two slides ago, I was actually uh, importing that. Uh, and that's part of a build flow as well. Uh, and then for each vertex, yeah, it's still readable. It's a bit dense. Uh, so what we do is uh, we collect more data. So we get the job number for that build so we, we can retrieve that artifact. We can uh, uh, get the trigger. Uh, oh, yeah, one more tip. Use trigger jobs. Uh, so thought, sorry for the deviation, but it's kind of important. Uh, of course, we, we, we host our software on GitHub. Uh, and uh, sometimes GitHub is not so happy when like 20 jobs try to retrieve the same code base at the same time. Uh, so we have one single trigger job for each repo. Uh, and that then triggers the pipeline in turn. Uh, that saves us a lot of headaches. Uh, we had several instances where GitHub was just failing on, on, on some jobs because we, could, we were just doing concurrently for too many instances. Uh, so we have these trigger jobs, you get the build number, you get the SHA-1 of what you're trying to build and so on. So just retrieve your data. Uh, it's not so important what I do here. Of course, you will have to do something different. Uh, and then, of course, again, be defensive, check that whatever you needed, you actually did find it, and uh, break in case you don't. And then execute, that's the easy part. So use the data you retrieved. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, straightforward from here. Uh, this is controversial. <laughs> uh, I like to version control the build scripts, but I have mixed feelings about versioning control the release scripts. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion about that. Uh, who version controls their build scripts? That's almost half of you. Who version controls the release scripts? OK. Not so many. I would like to talk to you later. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting topic for me, and uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really interested in that. Uh, the reason I don't like to version control release script is that they mostly depend on uh, the Jenkins environment we have. So it adds no value if those scripts are actually in the repository together with the code when the our, our project are open source. So users will find this, this script and they will look all weird. Uh, and they will probably try to do a release and so on. So they will bring some. Release and deployment, yeah. Do you still do that? OK. <laughs> are you an open source project? OK. Would you do it if it was an open source project? 
Okay. <laughs> Just validating my ideas. Uh, the future. How does the future look like? Well, as some of you here, I'm actually here to learn more about the Workflow plugin. I'm really excited about it. I've been following since the very beginning. I've been playing with it a bit, but it wasn't it didn't enough, it have enough features to actually be able to do what we needed to do. Uh, so uh, I think it's going to be huge for the Jenkins community. And before you raised your hands and you told me that you prefer having a lot of small jobs, but of those people, how many are considering actually switching over to the workflow plugin when that is mature? That's, yeah, almost all of you. Uh, that that's a very interesting topic for me. Uh, I have blind trust in Kozuka, of course. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm the biggest fanboy of his, uh, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be great. Uh, so, yeah, this question again, and then probably one big job is going to be the future, and I think it's good news. It's good news for us. We will, have, <laughs> we will not have to jump from one job to the other and change configurations back and forth. Uh, and it's uh, probably good news for developers as well. Right now, my developers, they're kind of scared by the amount of jobs and they don't know where to click. They're afraid to break stuff and so on. So if only a bunch of jobs are there and they do everything they need to know, then that's going to be much easier. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really, really looking forward to this. And I guess I'll let you guys run for the lunch before time. <laughs> Have a good conference.